In this lecture, we are going to talk about RN2 focusing on the classification task. In our previous lectures, we talked about the typical RN models. We get usually X as an input, and then we have embedding layer, which is simple lookup table, and then the output of this embedding will be used as an input of the RNN. And then on top of that, we often add a fully connected layer and then produce the output. And based on the task, we can use different types of losses, but here mostly we are using cross entropy in our previous example. More specifically, we have inputs of a time series. And then each cell will produce output, and then we're going to compare this output with the given label, and then we compute the loss. And then, based on this loss, we're going to train our model. This is typical loss and then training for the RNN. Because we can connect in RNN in different ways, we can think of many uh, different types of uh, models and then uh, applications. However, in this lecture, we are going to focus on especially one specific model or task. It's called RNN classification. So we're going to connect all RNNs in this shape. So we have a uh, time series input. But for the output, we're using only the last one here in, as an output. And then often, we can use this one for the time series based on classification or sentiment analysis and so on. So in this lecture, we are specifically are using a, a name classification task for this RNN model. So uh, and our data is something like this. So we have uh, names, given uh, names, and then corresponding countries. For example, here, Bolov is uh, coming from Arabic, right? This name, Teram Jima, is going to be Japanese, and Hu is Chinese. So for given name, we want to predict the country. So in our data set, we have 18 different countries. So we're going to make a softmax output for the 18 countries. And then for the input, we're going to feed the entire name, and uh, we're going to divide to uh, each character, and then we feed a character one by one to each cell. That's uh, uh, basically uh, our model. So when we design this model, one thing we need to make sure is how we're going to design our input space. So specifically in this case, our input for each cell is one character. And then how we're going to feed that? What, what kind of input we're going to feed to RNN. So often we are using embedding layer, right? So it's kind of lookup table. So for given character, we have uh, index. So usually we identify unique uh, characters, and then we make some vocabularies, and then we use the vocabulary ID uh, for the lookup table. But in this case, because we know that it's uh, uh, S, the one English character, so we can just use S key code. And then this one is as a, we can serve this one as an index. So for example, here for A, we get SQ97, and then 97 can be used to look up the values in the embedding, and then the output of embedding will be something like this. Eventually, this will be used as an input for the RNN. So let's look at the example here. So let's say our name is Adele Love. So it's uh, the name, and then we divide the each uh, character and then we're gonna uh, identify the ASCII numbers for each uh, given character and then we use them as an index and then we are going to use embedding layer it's the lookup table and then uh, index 9700 and then we get these numbers from this lookup table of course these numbers are embeddings are trainable so we use this one as an input and this, these inputs will be, or these values will be also uh, trained when you do the back propagation. So for the source code, how can you make this uh, character array or string to array of um, SK? So we can just use this one line basically code. So for a given name, what we do is that we get one character by one, and then we call this ORD function, which can return the SK code, and then we're gonna wrap them as list comprehension so that we can create an array just to return this array. And from here to embedding is even simpler. So basically, we're going to make this embedding layer for the input vocabulary size. How many vocabularies do you have? In our case, is 
maybe number of or total ASCII code. And then the output, this is output size, which is input si for the RNN. So this is RNN input size or embedding output. And then and once we have this layer, basically we cannot feed some input and they will create some numbers like this embedded output. And this will be the input for the RNN. Let's look at the entire source code. So this is our main module. And then the suppose we have RNN classifier, RNN model, we can just uh, create RNN uh, for given hyperparameters. And then for a given name, what we do is that we're gonna create SK array, and then we just uh, turn this array to a tensor and a variable, Python variable, and then this is our input. And then we're gonna just uh, pass forward or uh, feed this one to our classifier, and then we can get the output. And here we need to just uh, pay attention on the rank, on the shape of the input and output. So input is at uh, the six, it's the six uh, characters, and then there is only one uh, input, so it's gonna be one to six. And output, we're gonna make 18 uh, different output because we are predicting 18 countries. So this is our output. So let's look at our RNN class. So in initialization part, basically we get a lot of uh, hyperparameters. And then here we are going to have three different layers after setting the hyperparameters. So first one is embedding. So embedding is that what is the input size and then what is the hidden size in here. Hidden size is the input size of the RNN. So for the RNN we are using this GRU and then also we define what is input size and output size. In this case, this RNN get the same size. It's called the hidden size as the input size and the hidden size as, uh, as the output size. And then on top of that, we're gonna connect fully connect layer, which uh, we are just using linear layer here. And the hidden size is the input and then output size here in this case is 18 is the output size. So we just define uh, these layers in the forward module, basically we're gonna connect them in the right order for the right input. So we're gonna get input here, and then input is created from this, uh, this, right? So this is gonna be our input. So input, if you just think about input, so the shape of this input is a batch size and the sequence. For example, here, batch size is one, and then uh, how many, like we have, uh, six letters, so one by, this is our input size. However, in our GLU, because we didn't use the patch first option here, so our GLU input is something like this. So we're gonna get a sequence, and then patch, and then this input. So that's what we're gonna get for GLU. So first, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do transpose this input, so we make this one PS to S, by B. So we just transpose them and then we directly feed this input to the embedding and then the output will be something like this embedded output will be something like sequence and B patch and then the input. And then this will be the input for the uh, GLU. So this is the input. And then of course we're gonna make a hidden and then we're gonna feed them the initial hidden. And then finally, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna feed the output, the eventual, the last output to the fully connected layer. But here, one thing uh, we are using is a small trick. So in the last layer, basically the output here, and then hidden, this is another hidden, is basically the same thing. So what we are going to use is that hidden as an input. So here, uh, this hidden uh, is used as, as an input for each cell, like this, and then we'll return the hidden, and this hidden will be used as input for the fully connected. And then uh, this output will be eventually returned. Also, we can do use this output, because this output includes everything here, so we can collect we can use only last output, which is basically the same as hidden. So in order to make it simple, we are just using this hidden for the input for the fully connected layer. 
So once again, so one thing that we need to just pay attention is uh, this part, transposing and then making the input in the with the right rank. So this is our initial input. So it's given input is just like that. And then we do a transpose in here. So after we transposing it, what we get here input is something like this. And then we look at the lookup table and then the embedded one. Eventually what we got here as embedded is so this one. This is it's gonna be the input for this embedding will be the input for the RNN. However, we want to handle many names at once. So of course, for many uh, given names, we can do loop one by one, but this is not very efficient. So we want to handle all this input using our uh, batch. So we, we want to collect them, combine them all together. So one issue with that is that, as you probably see here, this is our input size. So this is the length of each name, each string. So as you probably see here, for different names, their length is different. So here, which one we should feed if you want to make them as a batch? If you handle one by one, no problem. But if you make them batch, what kind of values we should feed? That is a uh, issue. A so very common solution for that is called zero planning. So the idea is that so this space we just feed to zero, so that it marks that uh, this is end of the string, end of the name. And this uh, three lines of the source code can exactly handle this for given uh, sequences and for uh, the lengths. What we do is that we create this zero, zero faded um, output. So it starts with all zeros and then we're gonna feed uh, actual values so that we're gonna create this zero faded uh, the batch matrix. And then once we have this, we just, uh, in the same manner, we just uh, call these embeddings and then it will create these embeddings. So for example, so here for each name, so we can just create these embeddings and these embeddings can just be used directly to RNN input. Okay, so this is our full implementation. We do have some helper function. For example, here we can turn string to SKRA and then this is our uh, zero padding and then uh, this is another utility that can make all the names directly to a variable so using uh, these two functions and then in the main becomes even simpler so we have uh, names like this and then basically this make variable will make batched input and then we can just feed this one to our classifier and then we can get output and then the input is something like this so the max size we are going to use the max size for the zero padding and then this is how many names in this case is batch size is four so output is also 18 but four different output so prediction for each name and then for the training we can just use this adam optimizer and then we use the cross entropy loss and then for this uh, criterion to loss, we can compute for uh, the output, which is our prediction. And then this is our actual label target, and we can compute the loss. And then we do a uh, backward, back propagation, and then we do update uh, these variables we train using this optimizer. When you handle with this uh, big size of matrices, uh, we can use the pack sequence to make this RNN operation even efficient. So we can just use the utility function provided by the PyTorch. So it's uh, quite simple. So the first thing that we need to do is that we order our input batches by the lengths. So like the longest one and so on. Of course, the length is going to be the maximum size in, in our batch. And then we order them and then we do embedding or do any uh, some pre-processing. And then we can call a method called a packing method and then we just make we just pack everything something like this and then this can be used as input for the rnn and then this packed input makes this rnn much more efficient and then it will uh, produce some output and then from this output we can unpack this one in order to use the output directly so you can find more 
examples in the uh, our GitHub repository, and then we can just use them to make it more efficient. So in one picture, we can show that what is the concept of packing, unpacking, versus just the regular uh, batch input for the RNA. Another way to make our operation more efficient is using GPUs. If you have, of course, more than one GPU, you can use data parallelism. In PyTorch, using GPUs is extremely, extremely simple. So you can just follow these just two steps. First of all, you can copy all variables to GPU using some data, tensor.cuda, and then you can just create a variable for that. And then second step is that you can also copy, put your models on GPU so that each model can read data directly from GPU. So this one, uh, once you have this model, you can just uh, call the model.cuda, then it will put our, your model to GPU. Then you can just use this classifier and, and everything will be okay. And then once you have more than one GPU, you can use data parallelism. So using this one is also extremely simple. So first of all, you're gonna create your classifier like that. This is your classifier. And then you can just wrap your classifier using data parallel. And then we'll return another classifier and then you can just use this classifier. Then once you feed your input data, it will automatically divide into the number of GPUs and then the PyTorch will automatically merge the output for you. So it's very convenient. If you want to know more about this data parallelism, you can read the nice tutorial written by us in the PyTorch.org. For the exercise, you can try all that what we covered in this lectures so using GPU, you can use data parallelism, you can also use pet pack to implement this name classification. Using the same kind of model, you can do a lot more. For example, you can apply this model to the sentiment analysis on movie reviews. So this is actually the data used in the Kaggle. So you can download this data and then you can predict for a given review, you can predict the sentiments, which is one of these five labels. In our next lecture, we are going to use RNN for the language modeling.